Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I am your host Sri Ayer. Many of us have read this book, The Art of War by Sun Tzu, but uh, who has done extensive research on this, on decoding this book, what it really means when it says something? I have with me the author of a book which is titled. I'll, I'll let him give you the title, but I want to first quote one phrase from this book, and we're going to deal with that also. The most important thing that you need to know is this is somebody that you perhaps can recognize. He is the son of Elmer Yuen, Dr. Derek Yuen. Doctor, good morning and nice to meet you. Yeah, it's great. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> so Derek has a very impressive set of credentials. He uh, has uh, done his uh, undergrad from London School of Economics and then he went on to get his PhD. Uh, and I'm going to let him talk about himself <laughs> a little bit. But more importantly, he has done this seminal work on understanding the book by Sun Tzu. And we're going to talk about that in some detail. But first, before we do all that stuff, Derek, welcome to P Guru's channel. How are you feeling? Oh, uh, excited because uh, <laughs> I, of course, I, I'm, I'm the author of the book, and, and occasionally I, I'm being interviewed. But, but uh, I, I'm, you know, great to know the the in Indian audience is my very first time. <laughs> yes, yes, China and Sun Tzu's book, The Art of War, is all the rage these days because of all the skirmishes happening in and around the, the border between <laughs> India and China. Right. So I thought this would be a good time for us to kind of talk about. It. So first, I'm going to set the stage by quoting one of the more favorite or people quote this quite a bit. This is by Sun Tzu. He says, know the enemy, know yourself, and you will meet with no danger in a hundred battles. If you don't know the enemy, but you know yourself, then you will win and lose by turns. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will lose every battle, certainly. Very profound words. <laughs> so give us a little bit about the history of Sun Tzu. I mean, we know he wrote this book. When did he write it? Mm -hmm. What was the impact of it? Why even the modern day generals in PLA swear by it? I mean, the whole mm -hmm. Chinese war philosophy seems to be based on this book. Mm -hmm. So talk us back and when did he write this thing and then we'll come back to your book. Okay. Um, before we begin, first I have to tell you my, the title of my book. That is uh, Deciphering Sun Tzu, How to Read uh, the, the Art War. So. Uh, we we now believe that Sun Tzu, uh, of course, he, he wrote he, he that's a that's a uh, that's a land landmark event. Is is uh, Sun Tzu himself meeting the king of of a state called Wu mm. W U? Mm. Okay, it's somewhere in, close to uh, the Jiangsu province uh, in the Changjiang River Delta uh, nowadays near Shanghai, you know, uh, Hangzhou. So he met the king of Wu uh, in the year uh, five one two B C or. Mm. or AD. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, we we're quite quite sure about that because, uh, and then the king of Wu uh, kind of enlisted <laughs> uh, Sun Tzu, and and Sun Tzu become one 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 of his his gen general, so, and and uh, later on Sun Tzu uh, uh, led the army of, of Wu and defeated uh, Wu's nemesis called uh, Chu. Chu mm -hmm. is about ten times the size of, of, of Wu, and, but, and he managed to defeat. Yeah, him. I managed to, to defeat him, and and. Uh, Go all the way into into choose a, a capital, uh, bloodlessly because mm. he he already fought a decisive battle uh, outside. So so he managed and and the and the true army uh, fled. So Sun Tzu just just bring the the Wu's force in, into the, the capital. So uh, so that's where the art of winning war without shedding a bullet comes in. Uh, sort of kind yeah, sort of yeah yeah. But of time. course yeah because they're saying is is a. Uh, at sieging or attacking a city is always the, the least preferred options of, yes, of, of yes. Sun Tzu. And, and you know, using stratagem or diplomacy are, are, are most preferred. So this is pretty much Sun, Sun Tzu's way. But, but of course, what, what really involves are uh, you know, strategic deception and, and, and all kinds of um, planning ahead that, 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 that allows Sun Tzu to defeat the, the enemy like, like 10 times of, of his size. <laughs> so uh, a lot of people think uh, the current PLA or the Chinese leader, they, they have uh, adopted uh, Sun Tzu or, or, or the Chinese strategy. Kind of philosophy, uh, broadly. Yeah, but uh, I think uh, what uh, who, who really bring Sun Tzu back to life, <laughs> yeah, it was uh, Mao Zedong. Because Mao Zedong, uh, he, he did not uh, receive any education overseas. 
And so even though he knows a little bit Marxism and, and you know, An- Angel, Marx and, and uh, uh, Lenin, all those work, but, but what is in, in his core of his thinking is, uh, was Chinese thought, mm-hmm. especially uh, the Taoist and the Chinese strategic thought. So actually in my book, I tried to bring uh, Sun Tzu and, and Lao Tzu, uh, the, the, the main figure in, in Taoism, to, together because they, w- without the two coming together, you cannot consider uh, Chinese strategic thought com- complete. And Mao is the, one of the best in putting them, them together because when Sun Tzu uh, specializes in military strategy, Lao Tzu elevated to the level of politics, mm. so you can use it in, in general life, in, 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 in power struggle. In it. And, and Mao, as, as we know uh, from history, yes. he's not only just good at fighting wars, but he's also good at uh, power struggle. Yes. And he applies a lot of Lao Tzu and, and, and Sun Tzu in it. But, but and, uh, after uh, Mao Zedong, even Deng, Deng Xiaoping, there, there has been uh, a, a saying or, or, or indeed a strategy called uh, you know, stay low or hide, hide your cap- capability and, and buy, the, buy the time, something like that. Mm. This is also a very uh, signature Taoist strategy. By, by, uh, it's, it's a classic uh, you know, Taoist or, or Sun Tzu style uh, strategic de- deception and catching up strategy of, of China. So the, the backbone of it is, is all Chinese uh, 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 stratagem and, 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 and strategy. But uh, nowadays, I think uh, when we talk about Xi Jinping, of course, uh, one, I, I know he, he's not a very good strategist, but there's a time when uh, China tries to reclaim or, or, or try to uh, attain the control of the South China Sea, the islands uh, down, down there. Strictly islands yeah, or yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, there was, uh, and back then there was uh, one kind of strategy that, that was widely used and, and applied. That is the, the West call it the, the gray zone. Mm. Because in, in uh, Chinese strategy, it is possible to have war and peace together. Oh. Wow, because this is the, the Chinese dialect. I think the Indians have, have something very, very sim- sim- similar. So to the West is something not uh, decipherable. They, they don't understand, you know, either it's either war or, or peace. It cannot right, be war right. and peace. Right. But in, in China, we have uh, war and peace together. Non, that's why we have non-war, war, <laughs> non-confrontational co- confrontation, uh, all, all sorts of things. That, that, that sounds, uh, you know, that sounds hard, hard to understand by, by the West. But, but this is where Xi Jinping, uh, I think, and, and, his, and his men find, find the, the inspiration that they know the West cannot cope with it intellectually or, or philosophically. This is, to, to them, it's a paradox. You know, how can the commander on, on, on the battleship they decide where, when, when, to, when to fight a cruise missile or, or, or when to fight and when not fight? They, they have no idea. So this, is, this was the occasion when uh, the, Ch- the Chinese uh, won a lot of, you know, grounds, lands, islands, you know, in, in the South China Sea. Yeah, and so we, we can see uh, some remarkable examples of the adaptations of Sun Tzu and Chinese strategy thought in, in, you know, from, by, by different uh, Chinese leaders. Very fascinating because I, I want to tell our viewers, you may have been watching viewers, the DGI that I do with the Siddha Chitalaji, and we have been talking now about the Biden administration practicing strategic ambiguity. I think the Biden administration is beginning to understand this war and peace at the same time. And they, in turn, appear to be applying the same kind of strategy. I mean, whether we can take a specific instance and and quote on that or not, let's just put that thing aside for a moment. Mm -hmm. I want to walk you through your childhood. Where did you study your undergrad? How was your experience? Because now you are a strategic expert. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're working in strategy, right? Yeah. So, kind of walk us through your background, <laughs> where, because you, you've very impressive background. So, just walk us through, you know, your uh, uh, education, growing up, and so on. Okay, I I was born in in, in Hong Kong, and uh, I I went to the same uh, boarding school. My my father El El went went uh, when when he was when he was small. So we we received, uh, you know, very Western boarding school style, you know, mm. and, and education. Mm. And then uh, I study, uh, I, I didn't pick the, the science stream when, when I was in my secondary school, I picked, I picked the art, art stream. I That's see. why I study history mm. and, you know, economics and, and all sorts of things. So, uh, and, but, but 
Uh, then I, I actually my undergrad was in the University of Hong Kong before I leave for uh, the UK London School of Economics for my master degree. So uh, actually, in in uh, during my undergrad days, I I study social sciences and and try to I I try to be a fierce my, myself. But I need I, I know I need a more comprehensive base right, before right. I can be a strategist. And back then, I've been you know testing my my, my theories all the time, but usually they they were they were wrong. So I need I know I need some refinement. <laughs> so I I went to you know London School of Economics. I specialize more on international history and international re- relations, and then I realized. I am not that into explaining what has happened. I want to know how to do, how how to act. That's why I pursue my PhD studies in in strategy. I I, I pick strategy because it's it's more actionable. And my uh, supervisor uh, was uh, Professor Colin S. Gray. You know he he is a, a, a famous nuclear strategist and 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 a defense planner. And uh, he has. And where did you do your PhD? At at uh, University of Reading yeah. in in the United King- Kingdom because uh, my my supervisor moved moved move there, so I have to follow him. Uh, and I at that time I uh, come across not just of course I, I myself I I have to go deeper into Chinese uh, strategy, but also at the time I I come across uh, Clausewitz uh, and and other Western uh, strategic figures. So, so I actually my thesis is about synthesizing uh, Chinese and Western strategic thought because to me I think uh, Chinese strategy is very good at you know stratagem and grand strategy and and the philosophy, and the West of course is about how you know the tactical, operational, and the technological parts, and I think they too can can come together mm. like like seamlessly, but of course they haven't been uh, uh, someone who can do it. Cross culturally, so I, I wish to be the the one. So so my my book deciphering Sanzu is not just about you know Sanzu and and Lao Tzu, but it's about how the West uh, understand Sanzu and how the West has incorporated uh, Sanzu's uh, uh, thought. I was giving example like a uh, uh, little heart, or uh, there's a, a, a American strategist called called John John Boyd. Yeah, they are they 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 they. they Adopted uh, Sanju's thought uh, very extensively. And at the very end of the book, I I, I revisited uh, Chinese strategic culture because I I think nowadays a lot of people they understand Sanju just in in some kind of uh, maxims, uh, axioms, and or phrases. But actually, this has defeated the, the original purpose of of Sanju because in order to understand Sanju or Chinese strategy, you have to at least get get to know its history, philosophy. Culture, everything be before moving to that. So right. I, that's why I, I have a specific chapter in my in my book telling how uh, Western strategists like Little Hart or, or John Boyd try how how they manage to to make this happen or, or try to do it without without uh, the people realizing they are right. actually right. incorporating Chinese Chinese thought. I want you to take us back to the last Chinese empire that was ruling China. I think it was what the Qing Empire, the Qing. Manchurian. Yeah. Uh, so then you had the revolution, Sun Yat-sen, and, mm-hmm. and then um, kind of walk us through how Mao mm-hmm. may have used Sun Tzu because we don't know if we did use or not. Because mm-hmm. he may have used Sun Tzu to overpower an entrenched Kuomintang government mm-hmm. that was a nationalist, it was more capitalist, it wasn't communist, mm-hmm. and. Uh, that that period is very fascinating. I think from the time the Song Dynasty mm-hmm. fell, who took over, and then what was the fights that were going on? Then the Japanese were coming mm-hmm. in. Yeah, yeah. So can you take us back and walk that us through? It was an an epic period because yes, the yes, yes. the Qing Dynasty co- collapsed uh, in in nineteen eleven. Uh, Why did it collapse? Because uh, there they they have been first out of money, and there were revolutionary. Forces, forces like like Sun Yat-sen. But Sun Yat-sen back then was was not in China because mm-hmm. he, he can only come come command the 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 revolution uh, in indirectly from from overseas. Okay. So, but but uh, there has been because back then China was uh, westernizing and they were building like like railways and that involves lots of investment money. Mm-hmm. But sometimes you know investment <laughs> right. might, might not may not succeed, <laughs> and so people had, are, are, are are angry. They have. They have grievances. They they lose money, so uh, it it and and of course many Chinese are still very traditional. Mm. They think railways, well, 
how come it's so noisy? It's it's so powerful and it's bad for it's bad for uh, feng shui, <laughs> some something like that. All sorts of reasons. <laughs> so of course the the revolutionary they they can make use of all these uh, rumors, excuses, uh, reasons, and 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 to to make their claims and and to advance their 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 interests. So at at the end of the day, kind of the the local provinces they they declare independence. They they find the Qing court is not. Not reliable and not powerful and, and anymore, and the Qing uh, emperor uh, ab- abdicated. Abdicated. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, but later on, of course, there there came uh, another Yun, <laughs> same surname as 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 ours. It's called uh, Yuan Yuan Shikai, mm. and and he 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 is one of the most powerful uh, warlord, and and he he kind of steal the. The, the results of the revolution and, and try to become em- emperor himself but of course people uh, you know cannot accept a, 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 a kingdom anymore a king and a kingdom anymore so they they, they and, and, and he, he kind of uh, uh, and he, he was sick and, and, and died so later on um, actually the the, the Communist party was formed in in uh, 19, 1921. Okay. So so and they have their you know they have the party congress the uh, conference <laughs> and and uh, Mao Zedong in the beginning is just a a peasant in in uh, Hunan province somewhere in interior interior of, of China but but with rivers <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah along along the rivers and he of course his family is quite wealthy you know when when you're talking about the the the, the peasant class uh, but and and he and in the beginning. He learned about uh, Chinese strategy, Chinese thought from the traditional school, and and later on, because we know Mao Zedong himself never led an, an army. Mm-hmm. He was a, a, a just a student, not not even a scholar. So he 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 learned the uh, strategy or military thoughts. I mean the the brief ones from uh, Chinese classics like. Uh, like the romance of three kingdoms or, or the tales of uh, the water margin. The tales of water margin is important because they talk about how to rebel against the government. <laughs> so so uh, Mao Zedong in the beginning, they, he followed suit and tried to occupy uh, uh, some mountainous region so that the government force, nationalist force cannot, cannot, defeat, cannot defeat them. So this is the very beginning uh, Mao Zedong find uh, Chinese thought or Chinese uh, ideas useful. And, and, and later on, uh, when, when they occupied, they formed a communist uh, region somewhere in the Jiangxi province, mm-hmm. they, they faced uh, five invasions, mm-hmm. or, or, or yeah, five invasions from, from, uh, by, by the nationalist armies. And uh, Mao Zedong managed to, you know, according to uh, orthodox <laughs> communist, Chinese communist history, they, he managed to defeat the first four, four waves. Mm-hmm. And, and they, and, uh, during that time, he 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 demonstrated the use of uh, you know guerrilla warfare and and uh, yeah, he's and, up in and the maneuver right? yeah, maneuver yeah. warfare or right. sort of thing, and and uh, he was in many on many occasions he, it was his ideas because the the communist uh, or the Soviet advisors they keep telling them to fight the war in a in an orthodox way, but Mao <laughs> Zedong says no, we're not gonna we're gonna die we're we're not gonna win, so we have to make use of. Of, of these uh, uh, ancient you know thoughts and and to to try to highlight the, the advantage and how to to downplay the disadvantages so uh, there was uh, and and afterwards of, of course we, we know there was the, the long march but the, but the fifth wave what happened on the fifth one if one uh, because the the force the national nationalist force was too too overwhelming and and Mao Zedong or in the Chinese history they claim uh, the the Soviet advisors and commanders they they want very rigid defense they 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 so it's not not flexible responses so uh, but but so s- slowly they're being you know and and circle and, and, and defeated yeah. uh, uh, piece by by piece and and so they have to abandon the the place and and move on to the to the long march but during long long march Mao Zedong still display some strategic. Wisdom by by fooling, fooling the the nationalist force and and going going around different places. So who was funding the nationalist force? Uh, oh, uh, I think nationalist force was long supported by uh, by by the Americans. Mm-hmm. So of course the communists supported by by the Soviet. Okay, by, so by the Soviet Union. so this is the classic Russia versus America fight that was being yeah, played so out the in China. Yeah, so the proxy war has been there yeah. for for a long, long time. But for, of course in the beginning. The nationalist force. Uh, I mean, be, before Japanese in, in invasion, they they are still 
launched it on their own. They even have some German military advisors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they, yeah, and and they they taught them some uh, maneuver warfare and some like that. But of course, after after Japan and Germany came came together, they they have to let the German yes, the advisors World go. War, go. Yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, the actually the Japanese invasion started in 1931. Okay, so it was quite a long time be, before that. But once the the Germany and J- J- Japan form an alliance, I mean, with with Italy, they they have to let them go. <laughs> they right, cannot keep right. keep them anymore. So, uh, in in the, in that fifth in that five uh, invasions of the communist base in in the Jiangxi province, I think the German advisor play play some role <laughs> too. It, but I mean the the national side, not not the Mao Zedong, not of the, course, the, of course, the communist of course, side. Of course. Yeah. So, so now the nationalists have them cornered of sorts, mm-hmm. and then Mao Zedong decides to go on the long march. To, yeah, to to break to break away and go on the long march and move all the way to somewhere near uh, on the west of China. Did Xi'an. he cut through the nationalist forces? To yeah, many times. <laughs> How did they allow that? Because uh, of course the history says because Mao Zedong was brilliant and things like that. But but the the reality was was that. Uh, Chiang, Chiang Kai-shek, the, the, right. the generalism of... Sun <laughs> Yat-sen by then died, right? Died, yeah, died, yeah. Died, so died. it was uh, Chiang Kai-shek. Chiang Kai-shek uh, tried to save his own force and by using the other warlords' force. I the other warlords don't think, why? Why have to die, <laughs> die, for, right. die for you? You just try to expand my, 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 my force. So, so there, there are some disunity in, in, see, in, in the see. nationalist force and, and, and of course... Uh, you know, and and they, they the communists moved to some uh, deep deep interior of, of China, and 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 those people they don't want to go after them <laughs> all the time, and and sometimes when they when they uh, tried every time when they try and circle the the, the communists they they, they, they they broke away. <laughs> yeah, I, see, I see. So he has established himself some somewhere in the central of China. Mm-hmm. We're talking about nineteen twenties or nineteen. Yeah, the the twenties. Yeah, twenties. And, and then the nationalists were in power. Almost all of what is modern day China, or yeah, was until it, it was defeated by by the communists in 1940-49. 49. Yeah. So walk us through that period because it is generally believed mm-hmm. that's where Mao Zedong used all his mm-hmm. tricks, so to say, Sun Tzu and mm-hmm. Cao and everything. So mm-hmm. walk us through that period. How he defeated I think these he, guys? He, his um, his master use of Chinese strategy was during his time. Actually, during the Long March, uh, Mao Zedong purged many of his opponents I see. and and to uh, to gain power. I mm-hmm. think that was the time when he made full use of the Taoist and Lao uh, mm-hmm. strategic thought. So later on, uh, uh, they find a safe you can call it a safe haven, I think, a base somewhere in in near Xi Xi'an, and that is not really accessible by by any forces. Mm-hmm. So so and and but can receive a. Uh, Materials and, and and things from the Soviet Union, so they they are there. But as I as I said, the the Japanese invasion started in uh, nineteen thirty one, but the full scale inver- invasion started in in nineteen thirty seven. Okay. So there was a there was a time the national army has to really face the the Japanese army, and uh, there was a split of of views in the nationalist uh, uh, government on 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 the strategy of against the Japanese whether we should. Uh, finish off the communists first, or we we fight the Japanese right, first. Right, right, right. It became but, a two-pronged uh, war. Yeah. So, uh, but but you know the communists are quite good at uh, propaganda. So right. of course they're telling we should all fight the the Japanese in a united manner. We, yes. we should stop the civil war, things right. like that. And and there was you may say a coup hmm. uh, by uh, Chiang Kai-shek once almost defeated uh, uh, Mao Zedong. Mm. The communists in 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 uh, near near Xi'an, mm. and Jiang Kai-shek was was there, uh, supervising the the overseeing the 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 whole thing, but and then a general called uh, Zhang Zhang Shueliang, uh, mm. uh, kind of, kind of uh, put put him in in in, in house arrest. <laughs> put Jiang Kai-shek, <laughs> Jiang Kai-shek <laughs> in house arrest. Oh wow! Mm. So I say it's not really a coup, but but he tries to convince Jiang Kai-shek. You know, we we should stop this. We should fight. We should fight the, the, the Japanese. Japanese, Japanese. Than fighting here. Yeah. So, so that was a massive move because in, if he had not done that, mm. the communists would have been finished, yeah, well, and was nationalists finished. would have been the only yeah, ones who would have right, uh, right. Uh, managed. So to it was. Uh, they so the communists know sometimes things are not decided on the battlefield. <laughs> sometimes it can be political, it can be grand strategic, or sometimes or even psychological. <laughs> so so to to them, their 
their uh their edge is this propaganda and and to they they try to stir up the the sentiments in 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 China to make them feel this civil war is is crazy. <laughs> Yeah. So, so so then both united to go and fight the Japanese. Sort of. Yeah. But but uh, the nationalist force take the toll. Take take the main course, main. Yeah. Take the damages. And and uh, even Mao Zedong later he he, he says uh, the Japanese play the biggest role uh, in the communist takeover of China <laughs> 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 because uh, actually there was time the communists have to hide their their, their force and and not letting the outside world and nationalists know they have. They have so so many forces because at that they, they gather the the people, weapon, money, and and they defeated the Japanese a, a, a number of times. So and and of course that there was a American journalist called uh, Snow maybe yeah mm. he he read a book a uh, uh, red star over over China that brings the uh, sympathy from 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 the West and and from America and the outside world towards towards the communists. Mm. So that was a huge huge boost. <laughs> Too. So time after time, Mao Zedong managed to survive. I think that right. that's the key. And and to survive, you have to, uh, as as Elmer says, you 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 cannot follow rules. <laughs> you have to right. you have to be rulers. And and this kind of practice has been there from Mao's time all the way till 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 now <laughs> to to Xi Jinping. So um, hide your strength, bide your time. Bide your time. Yes. Yeah. This is because Mao Zedong already demonstrated it once. During the Chinese Civil War and the Japanese invasion period, and Deng Xiaoping did it again in an economic uh, uh, sense <laughs> and in an economic way. Yeah, so I'm going to drag you back to mm. the Japan conflict. When was the Nanking uh, incident massacre. Ha- massacre happened? I think it was it was uh, nineteen maybe nineteen thirty thirty one. Thirty one. I think it was because. Uh, First, we, we a lot of people thought the Japanese come from the north, mm. but that was only after nineteen thirty seven. The the Japanese first uh, want want to take uh, the back then nationalist capital uh, uh, Nanjing. So in in nineteen thirty first they they uh, they they go from the from the south. They 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 use their their uh, navy to to take their forces to to yeah. Sea. Japan yeah. Japan had the biggest navy for the longest yeah, time. Yeah, believe yeah. it or not, even it was bigger than the yeah comparable British navy. to the yeah. uh, British yeah. and, and Ameri- yeah. American navy. But what was the um, what was the reason for Japan to invade China? We we know why why we know why why uh, Japan started war with America with China China uh, he first Japanese. Acquire a uh, Manchuria, right? Because uh, that's uh, north of China. Yeah, north of China, and and that was a main source of uh, material. Is also industrial base for the Japanese because on 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 the on the map because because of the projection, it, it looks like a Manchuria is a rather small place. Right. But if you put it, you know, in a flat, flat surface, it's, it's a huge mm. piece piece of land. It's it's not just for in, industrial use for for agriculture. For for labor and and everything, everything that a lot of things that that Japan mm. proper uh, lacks, so that that was the, the 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 beginning, and and Japanese realized you know the the Chinese uh, nationalists was was so weak, mm. then then why not we 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 just uh take the, take an entire China and defeat China? And they said in in three months, mm. <laughs> actually I think half a year in one or one year I think without the American support it is. It was possible, mm. <laughs> but with the American support, maybe, maybe, maybe that's that's too much. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but but. So basically, what you're saying is America was on the nationalist side. Yes. And yeah. that kind of stopped the progress of the Japanese. Of the Japanese in, in, from invasion. invading China. Yeah, Japanese. Uh, what they like, later Japanese took all the coastal areas, and uh, they just didn't manage, or they don't. Care about the communist base in 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 the north northwest and and uh, Chiang Kai Shek and the nationalist force moved into uh, the Sichuan province somewhere right. even deeper interior of in in the south southwestern side so uh, and 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 that was the time become a traditional uh, w- warfare between the two sides. So 1938, 1938, yeah, Second World War starts more or less, mm-hmm. and then Japan is still in control of Nan- Nanjing. Yeah. Has been when did they get driven out from there? From China? Yeah, from China. Actually, all, um, un- until 1945. Oh, I see. Yes, because until uh, they surrendered, they yeah, are... they they cannot. Yeah, they cannot win. But but they are not. They are not losing a lot of ground to, mm. to the Chinese either. The Chinese, they are they're good at 
you know, defending, but <laughs> right, <laughs> not right, taking right. back the, the land. So, so the, there is one theory that uh, uh, Japan kept going south all the way up to like even Burma mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because they needed uh, petrol for their war machine mm-hmm. and fuel, energy, mm-hmm. and, and they had to keep going to new places to try and see if they can get from there. Mm-hmm. How true is that? Uh, I think the invasion of uh, Burma is has a lot to do with cutting off the supplies to China from the south. Mm. Because back then, uh, China was basically, I mean, the nationalist government in, in Sichuan, in Chung, Chongqing actually, was, was basically surrounded by, by the Japanese force. Mm. And you cannot get things from Hong Kong and Canton. Right. You, right. The only path is from Burma. Mm. So the Japanese... Along the land. On yeah, the along the, yeah, the, the, the hilly right, uh, right, right. region. The Mekong Delta and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so the Japanese want, want to take that and to finish off China. Oh, because okay. because China take up too many of Japanese forces. Mm. <laughs> they want to free up the forces to fight the, the, the Americans. Yes, yes. But, yes, but yes. of course, it's, it's quite ambitious because you have to go, they go down all the way to, to Malaysia, to Singapore and go back up to, to Burma. Right, right. And they, they even send the, they want to send the aircraft carrier into, in, into the Indian Ocean. <laughs> yeah, that, that's too much. <laughs> See, so the thing that, you know, uh, makes it very curious for me is America has invested in the nationalist government, Chiang Kai-shek, mm. Kuomintang, whatever, what, I mean, nationalist, the same thing as Kuomintang party, right? They've invested their time for decades into that. Mm-hmm. 1945, they win the Second World War. Mm. The Japanese are out of China. Mm. Right, and then that should have made the nationalist hand that much stronger. What happened? Then how did Chiang Kai-shek end up losing the whole mainland and having to flee to Taiwan? Because the one biggest uh, strategic mistake is to let the communists uh, take, or the Soviet, actually the Soviet take uh, the northeastern side region of of oh, China. Oh, so the spoils were yeah, shared. Yeah, that was a Manchuria. Manchuria, okay, as I okay. said, was the an industrial base, agricultural base, right. and lots of things for for Japanese. So it has it was developed, but because you know Soviet Union is just right next to it, so, right, right. so it can go go and step in uh, uh, right across. So of course the and Soviet passed all these materials weapons to to the communists, and the communists uh, took they 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 the victories their successes uh, started. Uh, first, from from in the in the north, mm. and then they go down to uh, you know, Beijing, Tianjin, and all the way to the to so crushing the the nationalist force. I see. Yeah. I see. So essentially, the Americans, you know, said through the towel and said, okay, we're getting out of this one and let uh, China yeah, because you know, shed. yeah, Tr- Truman in the, before the the official start of the court, he was quite ambivalent towards the towards Stalin because mm. he he wanted Stalin help to finish off. Japan. The Germans so, so and, they, Japan. and the Germans, yeah. So, so they have to to give some concessions to, to right. yeah. But so, so that was the biggest mistake. And and but of course, the loss of China has been one of the biggest regrets of of the Americans. So that could might have or could have paved the way for the later acceptance of of the communist China. Mm. You know, in the Nixon period, and also later on when they when they when they let China join the WTO. But that then, was all much later, decades yeah, much later. later. But yeah. but that that regret is is so that the feeling is so strong that mm. that they, they that the US, every time when when U.S. has a chance to you know to re, regain or, or to regain China, they 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 always want want, want to do that. Mm. Very interesting times there. I mean, so Chiang Kai Shek loses in. Uh, I mean, he's being driven more or less driven out from. Mainland, yeah, he, yeah. he flees to Taiwan, to Taiwan yeah. and then he creates Republic of China there. Mm. And the ROC that he has, uh, you know, established there, that's the one that America recognizes as the official China. That's why they call it Republic of China, right? Yeah, all the and, way until Nixon, until Kissinger. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, yeah. So 1945, China is part of UN Security Council. They get kicked out, and then ROC mm-hmm. comes in its place in 1950, probably or something like that. When when Stalin, uh, Roosevelt, and right. Churchill when they discussed uh, the setting up of the UN, China was was already there. Oh. I mean, ROC was already there. Right, right. So oh, it's, I see, it's I see. one of one of the big four. Okay. <laughs> right, and then so 
uh, ROC has always been there till till uh, till Nixon and Kissinger uh, reaccept uh, reaccept uh, China. Right, and, right. And, and, so and uh, ROC is what Taiwan is. It's called Republic of China. Yeah. The mainland China is called People's Republic, Republic of China. China. So at PRC ROC. I just want to make oh. sure because we are covering a lot of history in like this small yeah, conversation. I, yeah, I, I like and that the 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 Indian viewer you know w- w- it's, it's also part of my my book's theme to to let the outside world know world Chinese history otherwise you cannot understand yeah yeah yeah, yeah you cannot yeah. comprehend uh, Chinese right. strategy see see the thing is the Himalayas mm. are a big wall think of yeah, it like a yeah. thousand foot wall it is. you don't know what's happening on the other side now, this is a small attempt to try and first of all make viewers buy his book it's available on Amazon <laughs> it's available in India you can buy it and uh, yeah, it's, the, it's, a, it's a scholarly work I mean yeah, the you, new uh, paperback edition just came out uh, uh, earlier this year. <laughs> oh, wonderful, yeah. wonderful. So, so we have a wealth of information in that book and uh, what we would like to, you know, carry on in, in the weeks and months to come. Once in a while, you know, we, have, we talk about if something happens somewhere mm-hmm. where we can go back and say, aha, yeah, this is the, explained the in this Sun Tzu chapter. Mm-hmm. This is probably what the strategy was at this point of time. We can go back and, you know, we can re- mm-hmm. revisit that. But, um, Thank you so much, Derek. It was a wonderful conversation. And viewers, this is Elmer's son. We have to help Elmer's son push his book. I mean, you don't have to read it, but first buy it. Yeah, and this is a great great friend of Elmer. <laughs> <laughs> really is a great friend of thank you yeah, so thank much. Thank you so much for having me. No, no problem at all. So viewers, do like, share, and subscribe to our channel. And also, please click on the bell button for notifications and and let's encourage our young authors this is a scholarly document there's a BBC interview whose link I'm going to provide to you you can take a look at that also they interviewed three specialists and one of them was uh, Derek it's important to know the history because if you don't know your history you are doomed to repeat it at least for mm-hmm. that from that perspective it is very important thank you once sure. again Derek it was okay. a pleasure talking to you thank you, you. Thank great you. pleasure Thank you.